So let me begin by telling you about frugal innovation from a personal perspective and trace the kind of uh, humble origins of this very important concept. I grew up in Pondicherry, a uh, former French colony in southern uh, France. Um, the weather was very hot and water was rationed. So me and my brothers would wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to fill these buckets with water that we had to clean ourselves and cook. And then once a week, we had the luxury of taking what we call a one-bucket shower with one bucket. And also remember that even though I went to a French high school, next to my house was this old man who used to resell or rent, actually, old English magazines and books for just a few cents, which allowed me to catch up on English much faster than my fellow students. Of course, today in the West, we came up with a very fancy term for this called the circular economy, but we have been practicing it in poor countries for eons. So after experiencing scarcity for about 20 years, I emigrated to the West, probably lured by the promise of abundance. I studied for seven years in France, then went to United States and settled in Silicon Valley, where I live now for the past you know, 20 years now. And what I noticed in the West is that innovation is considered as very sexy. Look at, for example, the MAVEN, the satellite launched by NASA, which entered Mars orbit in September 2015. It's an unbelievable kind of you know, scientific achievement. The problem is that this kind of innovation doesn't come cheap. Uh, this project actually cost $680 million of taxpayers' money, like myself, to send this baby into Mars. And that's what we have seen since World War II, is that companies in the West, whether they are American companies or European companies, have been outspending each other, outcompeting each other, to see who is going to be invest most in R&D. And now Asia, led by China, is entering the same R&D arms race, to the point where in 2016 it has been estimated that the biggest companies in the world spent a whopping $700 billion in R&D. What's wrong with this picture? Well, what's wrong is, just because you spend more in R&D doesn't mean you're systematically more innovative. And this was a very taboo subject that nobody talked about for a while, until 10 years ago, uh, several consultancies, including Strategy N, which is now part of PwC, begin to debunk this myth that more R&D leads to more innovation. As a matter of fact, they found that there's no correlation between how much you invest in R&D and how innovative you are. In other words, money does not buy innovation. And yet, we keep spending more and more in R&D to produce useless stuff like this one in Silicon Valley. It's a $400 Wi-Fi enabled juicer which turns out to be no more effective than a manual juicer I use every morning, which only cost $1. Okay? This is the kind of useless innovation that led Sam Petroda, the former advisor to uh, the Prime Minister of India, to say that the world's best brains are wasting the brain power trying to solve rich people's problems who really don't have problems. Okay? But actually, what are the real problems? How about 17 of them? These are the 17 SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, established by United Nations to help the entire world community become better in terms of education, healthcare, access to energy, etc. So it became clear to us, me and my co-authors, that we have spent too much time in the West and we became so kind of enamored with abundance that we forgot our roots. So we decided to go back to our roots, which lie in scarcity, to figure out how entrepreneurs in poor countries go about coming up with new products and services. In other words, how they go about innovating. What's the mindset? And that's where we discovered something amazing is that these entrepreneurs in emerging markets have a unique mindset. Let me illustrate the difference between what happens in Silicon Valley when an engineer comes to work Monday morning. He asks himself, what if he can create a solution that connects my fridge to my smartphone? We all have a fridge, we all have a smartphone, and if I run out of milk, I can get an SMS so I can fetch a gallon of milk on the way back home. That's what I call small what-if question. Because someone in India asks himself a big what-if question. What if I can invent a fridge that does not operate, that operate without electricity? That's a big what-if question because 600 million people in India live off the electricity grid. And this question wasn't asked by someone who has a PhD from uh, computer science from MIT or an MBA from Harvard, but by Mansook Prachapati, who didn't even finish his high school, is a porter by training who invented the world's greenest fridge called Mithikul, made entirely of clay. It's 100% biodegradable, 
doesn't consume electricity, and it essentially uses the principle of evaporation to keep the lower chambers cool. So it can keep fruits and vegetables fresh for several days, milk fresh for three days. 